Ivy Valentine subscribes to Mark Yoon, so should you. Enjoy your treat! What's up guys? Today we actually have a treat for you. We have an interview, an exclusive interview, with Alani Manella, who has been a prolific voice actor in the industry, 500 credits to her name, including Ivy Valentine from Soul Calibur up and through uh, Soul Calibur 6. We also have Mortal Kombat 9 as Shiva. Pretty sure that like all of you just know who she is just by hearing her name. And first of all, I want to thank her for being on the channel and allowing us to have this interview because she doesn't really do interviews too often. Very thankful for that. The first question that I actually have for her, is there any interesting stories that you can tell us throughout the entire history of the Soul Calibur franchise. Just a little story that you have from voice acting for that game series in particular. Hello, Mark, and thank you, all you wonderful fans out there, for all your support all these years. Here's a funny little story. When they first brought me in for Soul Calibur 2, I was done with all of the lines. They had me imitate some voice they played for me to match maybe something closer to Soul Calibur 1. And they didn't realize, I guess, that I had done a lot of games and a lot of exertions, which are the attacks and the, you know, getting hit and the deaths and all that. And one of the guys came in the room with me and said, you know, the short one is like little knife, like, hut, hut, hut. and I said, you mean, hut, hut, oh, you've done this before? And my first and only facial mocap, I believe, was with Soul Calibur V. And they would just show me something on the screen, and the script was written in text. So there was no paper script or anything to look at. And I noticed that from far away, you're noticing Ivy doing a kick and a spin. And it just went, huh? Ah. <laughs> and I asked them, can I do it better than that? And they had this conversation in Japanese, and they came back and they said, if you do like you see on screen, it's okay. I'm thinking, why am I here? <laughs> The next question I have for her pertaining to Soul Calibur, and particularly Ivy, Ivy Valentine, is what is your favorite costume? Do you have a favorite costume, and uh, how do you feel about the character as a whole in a story? By the way, a lot of these questions were actually sourced from my Discord, so if you want to get on the action on uh, another interview in the future, or just to, to have some fun on there, be sure to check the description box for a link to my Discord. I had to actually go back and look at the outfits because, unbeknownst to most people, we voice actors are never told much about the game at all. No storyline, we don't see the different outfits, we don't know about the different scenarios. So I looked back and I probably think I like the outfit from Soul Calibur 6. Although, I always wondered to myself, how can she fight with such big, <clears throat> you know what, and that outfit? <laughs> so I know it's fan service, but I enjoy seeing what the fans post it's really great thank you so much every time I get a glimpse of something or hear something I'm going wow did I do that and yes I had to go back and listen to some of the clips and I don't know they're just most of them were just so short and you know how pathetic and hmm where do I cut things like that and they're all great had there been an annoyance factor where I could have improv a little bit more fun stuff, I think it would have been just choice, but that's not how the game was set up. So yeah, I think it's uh, always challenging to come up with something new when it's kind of the arena style fight. Now, have you actually played any of the Soul Calibur games in particular? I know you're very busy and uh, your career keeps a lot of you and you also do a lot of stuff with animals, which we'll get to later in the video. But uh, just, yeah, have you played any of the games and what do you think about them? Have I played any of the Soul Calibur games? Unfortunately not due to time restraints, but I have watched several playthroughs on YouTube and I congratulate people for having so many moves, which I don't know how I could have done. Another thing I'm curious about is, you have you ever been recognized for your voice outside of, uh, you know, the booth like when you're out and about in the world i know obviously you're not going to be doing voices when you're at the grocery store you're not going to be like calling the <laughs> the uh, people at the register curs and stuff like that but uh you've done a lot of work so i'm sure maybe somebody one of the fans at some point has picked up on something no I have never been recognized in public for my voice. I have been recognized one time when I was at a movie theater, which I haven't gone to in ages, when I was buying popcorn and someone said, oh, you were the one that was a storyteller in Balboa Park for the Christmas thing. So that's the only time someone said something. I don't go out much, and as far as talking as Ivy Valentine, I doubt if I ever would. Do you have any convention stories or stories from any con? Because I know a lot of 
the voice actors and people that are involved in the video games industry like to do the con circuit and try to meet with fans and whatnot. Uh, anything interesting happened there? As far as conventions go, I have been to 13 electronic entertainment expos, which is mainly for the business side of it, and a couple of game developer conferences, the Consumer Electronics Show, and Comic-Con. And I did a panel at Comic-Con, and that resulted in me leaving after our hour was up and going into the hall, and there was like 100 people lined up to show me, look what I can do! <laughs> they wanted to show me their vocal skills because they knew that I was a casting director, too. With over 500 credits on your IMDb page, uh, by the way guys, her IMDb is going to be in the description box below. Just go click on it and see a lot of the things that she's done. You'll probably be surprised. Uh, I'm sure you've heard her at some point before, even if you're not very familiar with her, which you probably are. I don't even know why I mentioned that. But my question for you is, how did you come up with so many different unique voices with so many credits? It's I've listened to a ton of them, and it's not like uh, some voice actors where they just sound the same for every character. You legitimately have a different vocal range for every single character and make them feel unique and different from one another. How did I come up with so many different voices is probably because I had no friends. I had to invent them. I always say that as a joke. But I was a mimic. I would watch TV when I was younger, and so I probably ended up imitating cartoon voices and later on my teachers. My dad was also an opera singer, so I think I might be able to attribute part of my four octave vocal range to him. And I'm a good technologist. I can tell people how to sound like a Klingon, or maybe do a wobbly throat thing for a creature. You can catch some of my stuff from It Chapter 2, The Smile Movie. Those clips are on my YouTube channel, and I'm going to be in another movie coming up this year called Last Voyage of the Demeter, where I am three different stages of Nosferatu. Okay, another question I have is, do you have any advice for up-and-comers who are trying to get into the industry and trying to become a voice actor? What would you give them? Any tidbits or hints or anything that would be uh, outside of the norm? Um, as somebody as prolific as yourself, I'm sure you have much insight into that category as well. Advice to give someone who wants to become a voice actor. If you're in school, take theater or drama. Those are free. And many colleges and universities have internships. That will help you get in front of a radio station or other people for free again and get your foot in the door. You can take acting lessons. Those are great. Theater is a good background. You have to be able to use your body, too. When you take classes, however, to be on screen, they will tell you don't exaggerate your face because it will look too corny like Jim Carrey, right? And don't pay any attention to the punctuation marks or the words. Just wait for your moment, wait for your moment, wait for your moment. I didn't know you'd be here and just throw it away. That's not what we have to do in games. We have to be adding the motion to the ocean because a lot of times we're not in a cut scene. We may be a talking head on the left giving you your mission directive or congratulating you or an NPC call out. So again, uh, it's a really hard industry that you have to be very thick skinned for because there's a lot of rejection and if you don't want to hurt your voice, games are not the thing to do. I can get into that a lot more if you'd like to do another interview separately, but it is something that you have to become your own engineer. Everybody has their own studios now, and so that's another thing that you have to be familiar with. Be a good cold reader because you won't get much practice time. You probably won't even see a script before you get in front of the mic. And again, don't just pay a lot of money to people that aren't qualified to teach you because I have this saying, it sometimes applies. Those who can, do. Those who can't sometimes teach. So perhaps check out their IMDB credits. See if these casting directors or these teachers have anything that's current. Some people call it the paid audition. When you pay for a class just to be put in front of an agent or a casting director, that is fine. But take your time. Some people pay a lot of money to take, oh, a six-week course and then pay another two grand to get your demo made. And then they think, oh, I'm ready. I'm going to just send my demo out everywhere. No, no, no. You know, it takes a lot of time to be comfortable in your own shoes and you have to be multiply voiced in order to be cast in most games because a lot of times they don't write enough lines for one single part. A lot of people think, oh, it'd be fun to do voices or someone told me I have a good voice. I should do radio or, you know, this is the reason I hear. But just because you can tell jokes at a party and have people laugh at you or do funny, quirky voices like, OK, I can do a dumb voice like that, doesn't mean that those are voices used or that would be in demand. Remember, agents usually have two reasons for not representing you. They will say, we already have someone that sounds like you. 
or we have to find work for the people that we already have. And to be honest, agents want to hear a commercial demo that sounds like you did national things. So you have to get it produced for taglines like Walmart, live better, save more, whatever they have. And they don't really care about your character demo. They think they're going to make more money in commercials and promos. So you probably won't be able to get representation by just having a character demo. Thank you for that great answer. Uh, I also know that you are very, very, very into helping animals in need and things of that nature. Now, I know this isn't uh, a question that goes alongside of video games, but a lot of people want to know, like, how can you actually help local animals that are in need in your area? Are there some pointers that you have that maybe somebody who doesn't have a lot of money can do or somebody that, like, just not, doesn't have a lot of time but really wants to help out? Thanks for asking about how you can help animals in need better locally. Wherever you are, you can volunteer at a shelter. You can walk dogs, you can help groom, you can play with things, including all the animals that they have, practically. And please encourage everyone you know to spay and neuter their pets. There are a lot of free programs that will help out with the cost. SNAP, S-N-A-P, is one of them, but you can Google it. Low or free spay or neutering in my area. I am a huge animal advocate and an environmentalist, and I do donate to charities, but I do a lot of research on Charity Navigator first, because if I notice that there's a charity where their CEO makes six figures, no thanks. I'm not going to donate to that one. Again, thank you so much for being on the channel and doing this interview. I know that uh, your time is very limited and precious and you're very, very busy, so I very much appreciate you taking the time to correspond with me behind the scenes, whether it was DMs or setting this up through email. There's a lot of things went into this and I want to thank you especially for just like for being a good sport and doing this because you really didn't have to and I very much appreciate it. And uh, also thank you for subscribing. That like means a lot to me. Well, thank you so much for having me. And I want to again thank you fans. Mwah, mwah, mwah. I am so grateful for every opportunity and I would do anything to help you guys out if possible. Just, you know, check out my IMDb if you want to. Just click on it once if you can. That helps me. You can check out my YouTube and I have all my information on my websites. One is audiogods with a Z on the end dot com and the other is lonnymanella.com. Live lively and prosper. Ha! So with that being said, guys, I'm going to actually turn the video back over to you. I want you to sound off in the comment section down below how much you enjoyed this, this interview. Um, should I do more of these? What was your favorite part of the interview and why? Uh, any and all thoughts are always welcome in the comment section down below. And also you can find a link to all of Lonnie's stuff in my description box, including her IMDb, her Audio Gods channel, like all of that stuff. So make sure you go check her out and support her as well. That's going to be the video for today. I want to thank Lonnie for being here and I want to thank you guys for being here and watching and supporting the channel. And as I always say guys, I love it. Thank you. And thank you.